Well, we're picking up where we left off on the Chama coaling tower. The big tipple at Chama for loading coal into the locomotives. We're back. Um, well, we're working on the the, uh, the mechanism, the, the coal door. We, worked, we started on that last week, and this week we're finishing that up. It's been complicated. Oh, man. This is... This has been one heck of a project. Um, I knew it was going to be, but as always, I underestimated. Well, it's certainly going to be the centerpiece of the whole railway, and I think it's worth the effort. I do, you know, and when it was sitting in place, it's right there as you first come through the door. And uh, yeah, I think it's well worth the effort to just really make this thing nice. Right. Anyway, it's fun. Exactly. <laughs> And we had such a wonderful uh, time looking at the prototype that, yes. uh, that yes. you know, in and of itself was pretty exciting. You want some more or are we good? A little bit more. All right. Just a little bit. So the man here is opening and closing the coal door by pulling on this chain. If he pulls on one side, that opens the door, and then when he pulls in the opposite direction, that closes the door. It's a loop of chain that goes up over this pulley up here and uh, that pulley rotates on a shaft and that shaft has a, a, like a bicycle chain, a ladder chain here that runs down to a larger pulley and another shaft. And that shaft has arms mounted on either end and those arms go up and down pulling these rods which actually open and close the, the coal door. So there's a attachment here where each of these uh, these rods come down and attach to either side of the coal door which function as lifting points that open and close the coal door they lift it up and down so last week of course we looked at the actual construction of the coal door out of sheet plastic and uh, constructing that on this uh, this jig from uh, Micromart. And then cutting away parts of the, the floor of the coaling tower. All of this has to function together, the, the coal chute and the coal door. There's an interaction between the two and I have to make sure that nothing binds up against the other thing. And as we mentioned last week, all of this is being constructed out of uh, brass tubes and rods that we have here in the shop, as well as castings that I've made. And this, uh, this plastic roller chain or ladder chain, um, we found it on Micromart. It's no longer available, but I put a link in last week's description to a company that's still selling these. So last week we were able to get this entire mechanism designed and built that will actually uh, uh, lift the two arms and, and the mechanism that opens and closes the door, as well as the door itself. What we're missing are the arms that come off of here and the, uh, the mechanism that will open and close the door. And then once we get that dialed in, we'll have to actually construct, uh, finish constructing the, the coal chute here and the mechanism for the, the giant chute here to uh, pivot up and down. So now that we're caught up uh, on last week's work, this week we're going to be adding the two arms that extend off of this lower axle here, and then the, uh, the rods that go down to the coal door and the mounting points on the coal door as well as uh, finishing the coal door itself. And as I'm building the mechanism for the coal door, I need to constantly keep fitting the, the coal chute on here to make sure I'm not designing something that's going to run afoul of something else. Now, as I, as I mentioned before, we do, we have a lot of molds for making all kinds of parts here on our casting equipment. And so we got bins and bins and bins full of just parts that we've made for all kinds of other things. And these are actually uh, arms that went on a half, half inch scale drop bottom gondola. Our friend Don Hendrickson built this amazing half inch scale drop bottom gone and he uh, he scratch built all of the parts for it and then I made molds and, and did castings so that he only made, had to make one of each item and then we'd have uh, castings to work with. At any rate I had like half a dozen of these, these uh, 
arms that are supposed to operate the, the dump mechanism on a drop bottom gondola. And I thought, well, those will be perfect. The only problem is they're ever so slightly too long. But I figure I can just cut the, the very end off and reshape that and drill that out and it'll be, it'll be perfect. So after cutting off the, the last third or so of this and then reshaping that with my file, I just figured out a place here where I could drill through there uh, so that I have a place to mount the, the two arms that go down to the coaling door that will actually lift the coal door. And I have to make sure that everything's really free and easy to move at this point. Right now everything's just held in place with double stick tape so that I can check everything for alignment. I'll permanently mount it here later on. I'd like it to actually work by pulling on the chain and uh, that's going to be a little bit tricky. Everything has to be really free to move if it's going to operate by pulling on the chain. So next up I need to actually finish the coal door. I've, uh, I've got the one brass piece across here which, uh, which comes down and, and sets over the top of the, the coal chute itself so that the coal seamlessly moves from the bin onto the coal chute. And that also stiffens this edge of the door and holds it in square. So I'm going to apply a similar uh, piece on the back, uh, the top part of the door here. Uh, which right now is pretty free to warp and do whatever it wants. So it's going to have a brass piece as well. First I'm going to apply the rivets. I'm using these Archer rivet decals. I've used them on the, the coal buckets on the back as well. You can just buy these things from eBay or, or wherever. Uh, they're just little printed dots printed on decal paper and you cut out the decal paper and transfer that onto your model and it gives you a very small you know, not very tall, I should say, rivet heads. You can get them in different sizes, but none of them are terribly thick or terribly tall. And if you study the prototype, you can see that there's a, that there's a stiffening piece, I guess. There's a, there's a section of metal right through the center of the side of the coal door, and that is where the, the rod attaches that runs up to the arm on the axle that will actually open and close the door. So I need to duplicate those, and then those will be mounted on the sides of the door, extending out just far enough that I can attach the, the rods that go up to the arm. So I've, I've fabricated one of those rods here that connects the, the, that central mounting point on the door to the arm on the lifting mechanism. And I'll be darned, it works! <laughs> I'm just using a piece of blue painter's tape here to hold that, that central axle in place. Again, everything's just temporarily mounted to check for fit and function. Okay, now I need to construct the, the coal bin that's inside the coal tower itself. The little metal parts here that are exposed. The only part that you can really see is this little front piece that interfaces with the coal door. But if you look closely, this has sides on it to keep the coal from just spilling out around the edges. So it sits back behind the coal door, forming something like a clamshell that opens as you lower the front part. Uh, the back part being quite stationary and attached to the coal tower itself. But you can see how it's just open on the sides and why it needs to have the sides enclosed. Uh, and also for strength. So I'm going to build a, a complete box around it and then that whole box will mount up inside the coaling tower uh, so that it forms that, that clamshell. And in this case, uh, that way it will make it quite strong. It's a little tricky. It just glues along the back side of that heavy beam that you can see there. And that's the only mounting point, but that should work just fine. I just have to kind of reach that up inside there and stick it to the back uh, just behind that beam there. And now that I've checked everything for alignment and function, it's time to take it all apart and take it over to the paint booth for painting. I like to use uh, true lacquers, solvent-based lacquers, uh, sometimes sold uh, online as Mr. Color 
Also Tamiya, it seems to be the exact same paint, same bottle, just a different label. Anyway, that's my favorite paint to use with a lacquer thinner and then start by applying very, very thin coats over the top of the whole thing. I'm actually using a, a, a dark gray to start off with and then I'm going to come back with a, a darker black, not a true black, but a, a deeper black than the color that I'm, I'm using right now. And then I, I come back with a, the light gray again and just sort of angle that on there. I don't really missed it per se, but, but uh, just a light coat, coat shot on from an angle to bring out highlights and detail. I'll be adding uh, dry brushing over the top of the whole thing to, to do the same function. But I like to do that here in the air booth to apply a, a, a lighter color shot on from something of an angle. And then back over to the Colin Tower with some double stick tape again just to temporarily mount things just to make sure that I haven't messed up the function of anything by, by getting paint on there. As you can see, I'm trying to avoid getting paint in, on the, the actual running surfaces where it might foul things up. Okay, on to the chain. Uh, the chain has a really bright uh, chrome plating on it some kind of plating on there to make it look bright and shiny and silver i don't want bright and shiny and silver i want it to be kind of a dull silver uh, uh, with a little bit of filth going on but mostly just a dull color not this shiny color and if you've watched the videos on making corrugated metal panels out of aluminum i use this etchant this circuit board etchant to to weather those aluminum panels and boy does it do a great job and I thought I, I'll bet I can use this acid to burn that plating completely off of these chains so I just put a little of that etchant in a cup and then I was dipping the chain in there and letting it sit for a little while and I could see where yeah it was it was taking that chrome chrome plating right off of there and then I've used a, a baking soda bath, just mix up a little baking soda and water to neutralize that acid. But when I use that, there's, there's a fairly violent reaction between the two, but it adds a, a coloring. It, a, it makes the, the metal turn kind of dark. So uh, in this case, what I'm doing, I'm dipping it in the acid and then into the soda bath, and you can see the reaction, and uh, I get that black goo and it, it actually colors the metal black with the aluminum it'll turn it completely black if I'm not careful because I want to keep a, a sort of a rusty dull finish to it and uh, in this case it, mostly it's just taking the chrome plating off the chain but it is adding a little bit of, of irregularity and dark color to it by using the soda bath. So you can see what I've ended up with here for the most part is just kind of a dull uh, industrial looking chain. It, does, it isn't shiny, it just has that dull gray color to it. I went back and forth a bunch of times because uh, as I cleaned it off I could see that there were still little little shiny areas down between the links. And I wanted to make sure that I had the, all of the shiny parts removed from the chain. And there we have the finished chain. I took this into the bathroom and put it in the sink and just let it soak in fresh water for a while. I wanted to make sure I had all of the acid and soda and everything toxic off of here. I'm then very careful to dispose of the acid, not just pour it down the sink or something, but uh, contain it and make sure it's properly disposed of. And there we have the final look. It's, it's a much shinier silver. I shouldn't say shiny, but it's a more silver color than the other mechanism. But I like that contrast. I, I'm probably going to add a little tiny bit of, of, of uh, dark color to it, but just a bit. And now at this point, uh, permanently mount it. So put it right back where it was with the double stick tape, this time using thick CA make sure everything's permanently mounted uh, again double checking to make sure everything operates smoothly as I'm going 
And now I'm going to take some uh, water-based acrylic here. The darker colors I'll get really sloppy wet and let that kind of soak down into the cracks. And then the lighter grays are sort of dry brushed over the top of the whole thing just to, to bring out detail and give it a bit more of a weathered look. I'm not going for any kind of really crusty, rusty look or anything. But to just come in here with a little bit of these lighter colors and just, just a hint of dry brushing over the surface of the whole thing to, to bring that out. And then the, the, the linkage here, uh, the, the rod that goes down to the door has to be painted separately. And then, like I say, I'm going to put a little of this dark wash just on the silver chain, just so I get a little bit of that dark color down between the links and everything. But I like the silver color. I don't want to mess with that. I just want to bring that out a little bit with some dark wash. And then I've added a plastic plate over the top of the hinge that runs the cold door itself to, to hide that and to create a smooth transition between the floor of the the coal chute and the coal door itself. And there we have it. I still need to build the, the other rod for the right side of the coal door that goes from the arm down to the coal door and figure out how all of that's going to interface now with the big uh, tilting coal chute that, that mounts next over the top of all of this. And that has a, a tilt mechanism, sort of a teeter-totter mechanism that I swear is almost as complicated as the one that runs the coal door. And it has to seamlessly integrate with the coal door and the floor of the coal bin so that it's a smooth transition all the way from the floor of the coal bin onto the coal chute. So just when you think you're kind of getting, well we are getting a handle on it. Oh there you go. <laughs> but uh, There's just so much more to do. And this, this coal chute is going to be another major piece of construction. And then there's a few little finishing things for the front here. Right. And at that, I think, it's done. I hope so. <laughs> but maybe not. But maybe not. Uh, one way or the other, like we say, it's going to be fun. Exactly. And that's the whole point. I think building this stuff is, is the funnest part of the whole thing. Oh yeah, modeling is, it's a blast. Yeah. And I, I enjoy the building a lot more than the running. Yeah, so I do too. So when we get this done, it'll just be going on something else. Exactly. And hopefully you'll want to follow along with all of that. So if you're not a subscriber to the channel, please subscribe to the channel. And the easy, easy way to subscribe to the channel is by clicking on the upcoming blue button. Zoink! Right there, the blue button. Well, we're not sure how you found this video on the internet. We hope you didn't find it boring. <laughs> and we will see you on Tuesday. Right. We'll see ya. We'll see ya. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.